Hello and welcome back to The Shade. My name is John McGrath, this is my YouTube channel Man in Shade and today we're sharpening plane blades. I have a bunch of vintage Stanley number fours that I'm just reconditioning and I'm sharpening a blade before I send one out to the, cus the customer so it's a perfect opportunity for me to show ye how I sharpen my plane blades and also to demonstrate this Veritas Mark II Deluxe Honing Guide system. So it's going to be a kind of a, a how-to and a description or a product review of this. So um, if you're liking the content so far, or if you like any of this content, please hit like and subscribe. Comments and questions below, all interaction is welcome as I try to grow this channel. Um, yeah, so your help helps me. So yeah, let me get this shot set up and um, get you guys in on the action here. And we'll demonstrate this and we'll sharpen this. All right. Okay, that should be a good spot. I think you should be able to see everything from where you are there. Um, so first off, let's just talk about this Veritas Mark II Deluxe Honing Guide Kit. Now this is the, the Deluxe version, so it comes with both sets of guides. I recommend you get this one, spend a little bit extra if you can, um, simply because you can sharpen your chisels with this set. Whereas if you buy this guy on his own, this is the flat clamp, it's not great for sharpening your chisels. It will clamp the chisels, but they tend to move around so they won't stay square to your diamond plate or your stone. And that's going to put your edge off at an angle, which you don't want. So get the deluxe set, which comes with the extra or the, the second guide, which clamps things from the side. As you can see that moving backwards and forwards there, hopefully you can. That will clamp your chisels and your shoulder plane blades. All right. So get this if you can it also comes with the flat roller so you have the extra flat roller these rollers are interchangeable between the two clamps this one has a cambered roller on it so you can put a cambered edge on your plane blade it's very handy for doing that right this is the one we're going to be using today so let's just take you through this so it comes with a fence and this is what i love about this system it's so quick and so easy to set up and um, to get your angles right and to just get a repeatable angle on all your blades. Nice and handy, nice and easy. So here's the fence that it comes with. So it comes with high angles, standard angles, and back bevels. All you need to do is move your stop to whatever angle you want to use. We're staying with stang standard angles. Standard angles, standard, what the hell? Standard angles. And we're going to be using the 25 degree one. So hopefully you can see that there. I'm not sure if you can see that. I can't see what I'm actually recording, but. There's a 25 degree angle, so we just set our stop to that. It's a standard angle we're using on our plane blade, so that's it, ready to go. So right, our plane blade, it's a two inch plane blade. So we take our fence, we slide it on here. We line that mark up to two inches, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact. Just tighten that down, turn it over. Hopefully you can see all this. Take our plane blade, slide it through our clamp so up along the side of our fence and up to our stop that keeps the blade square and it ensures the angle is now 25 degrees so simple holding it there then just tighten down our clamps good and tight so we don't want that plane blade moving around remove our fence and we're ready to go so nice and simple nice and quick and easy um, and very repeatable. That's what I love about this system. It's a little bit fiddly when you first start to use it, but once you get it down, it's so easy. Um, yeah, so just with the angles then, you can see here, hopefully you can see, um, here's one, two, and three in red. So we can move our clamp up and down our guide wheel to correspond with the red, the yellow, and the green here. So I have it set to two, which is our standard angles, and I have this guy set to 25 degrees. Might sound a little bit complicated, but believe me, it's extremely easy and extremely repeatable, and that's why I love this thing. Right, before we get started, before we put the blade into the honing guide, I want to just flatten the back of the blade to ensure that the back of my blade is square. All right, it's a nice, easy process to do that. You can just put the plain blade straight down onto the diamond stone, or diamond plate, I should say. And again, it's even pressure, side to, to both sides and the center and we just work it back and forward. However, we are, we're working this much material. So it depends how flat this blade actually is. It could take a long time, okay? So another option, and it's a better option, is just to use a small steel ruler. It's only a couple of mil thick. We set that up right at the edge of our diamond plate. That will just lift 
are playing slightly and it ensures we're just kind of working the first say quarter to half inch of our blade okay so then again it's three points of pressure and we just want to move this up and down until we square the back of that blade now it does kind of sharpen stuff like this it, it's a messy process so kind of have a sharpening area in your shed or have some sort of tray like this just to catch the runoff like i say it does get messy you're removing a lot of material you're working with diamond stones and plates and um, so yeah let's just keep working this take a quick look okay so let me just give you a look at this let's see if i can see it as well get that to focus on there right there we go so you can see that this is not squared the back you can see I'm, I'm removing more material on this side than i am at this side so i want to ensure that this is flush all the way across okay so i want to keep working this till i get a material edge nice and flat all the way across the back of my blade okay so let's keep doing that oh and excuse the messy fingers too this is kind of messy work That. So just to show you there again get that to focus there we go so you can see our, I'm removing more material on one side than across here so this tells me that you know this is not actually flat or truly flat at the back of the blade so I just want to get this all the way across to the other side it doesn't matter if I'm I have more down here than over here I just want the first quarter of an inch flat all the way across okay so I don't have to work it back to the same level the whole way down the blade I just want the first quarter of an inch from this side to this side complete um, if that makes sense to you okay so let's just work that again just keep our stone nice and wet just to lift the material out of the grit so it continues to cut and we just keep working this forward and backwards now you won't have to spend this long sharpening a blade once you once you've done this it's only a quick sharpen up each time but when you're, when you're sharpening a blade for the first time or you're buying a new plane, you usually have to spend a bit of time just to get them right. And it's worth spending that bit of time. So I'm going to take you through that whole process now. Get a look at that. Okay. We're making our way across there. There we go. Just a small bit more to go with that, I think, and I'll be happy once you have a quarter of an inch the whole way across. so as you can see I'm edge to edge now with that again I'm more on this side so you can see that even though plane blades look like they're flat excuse the mess of the hands now but even though the plane blades look like they're flat they're actually not flat and you can see that there but all I want is edge to edge across the back about a quarter of an inch so that's good enough you don't have to worry about flattening the whole back of this blade you can flatten it as you go as you sharpen all right so I'm just going to give that a quick run on the tailwind grit and just give that a good wet up then set our ruler just to give it a quick polish up okay that should do okay can you see that there you go okay i'm happy with that so we're going to get this back into our guide now and we're going to start working on our setting our primary bevel okay okay all that being said let's on, get on to the sharpening part now and what i actually use so if you're going to do woodworking you're going to have to get yourself a sharpening system there's no way out of it and um, you're going to always need to sharpen your plane blades you're going to need to sharpen your chisels you have to keep everything sharp so you don't have to spend a lot of money there are cheap options out there I recommend you spend a few quid on a honing system it just keeps everything consistent for you and you can spend a little less on your stones and plates now you can if you want if you have the money to buy three diamond plates you can get a coarse a fine and a super fine or a coarse a medium and fine if you can afford to go down that road go down that road but i'm just going to show you um, a cheaper option here this is a diamond plate it's a relatively inexpensive one it comes with a thousand grit and a 400 grit 
it's made by faithful tools it does the job it works great um, i use it all the time and i also have my water stone here which is just soaking this is a 4000 grit and 8000 grit i only use the 8000 grit just for finishing i don't need the 4000 grit at all so that's what we're going to be using to do this okay so just some soapy water it's just some dishwasher dishwasher liquid in some water and uh, that's all we need you can get honing guide or honing fluid it just prevents the steel on this from rusting it doesn't actually stop it rusting it just slows down the rusting process but you know you're going to be using this a lot so they don't tend to rust too much unless you leave them sitting for ages so we'll just give this a wet wet up nice and simple okay so when i'm using this i want to keep pressure on the edge and in the center just nice and handy nothing too hectic nice and light um tongues in the back here under the wheel and we're just going to move this back and forward okay now one more thing before we get going if you see another thing i love about this veritas honing guide system is we have a wheel on the side here which changes the height of our roller so right now it's set to 12 o'clock that's to set my primary bevel i can then rotate that all the way down to six o'clock which will give me extra two degrees which would give me um, a secondary bevel. So nice and simple. I don't have to change anything. I don't have to go back to the fence. Just rotate, pull him out, rotate him around to six o'clock. That's an extra two degrees. Another lovely feature. Okay, so let's get started with this. So just a nice even pressure across the plane blade. I'm gonna work it back and forward on the 400 grit. And we're going to set our primary bevel. Now I'm not sure what kind of condition this plane blade is in or what angle it's set to. Um, as it is an old plane blade. But we can check that just now. See how that's going. Yeah, it's actually not too far off. So you can see that hopefully it's beginning to wear in there. So we're going to set that all the way back. And we should, once we get all the way out to our edge, we should start to feel a bore along here. Okay. Just bearing in mind that this is a cambered wheel and it can rock side to side, so we want to stay center central as we can. So if we keep an even pressure across if we keep an even simple can't speak. <laughs> if we keep an even pressure across the plane blade, then uh, that should help us stay square for our work. Let me have a quick check on that. Right, we're making our way out to our edge there. So can you guys see that so you can see the grind that I'm putting into it and it's getting close to our edge so you can see that this was off square as well so we're working one side more than the other so we want to take this all the way out to our edge and we begin to feel a back bar the whole way across our blade when we have this all the way out to the edge the whole way across so that's what we want to achieve hopefully this is not shaking the camera too much check that so get that to focus you can see I'm almost out to the edge with my primary bevel so we're gonna work that all the way out to our edge like I said till we feel that bar okay I've moved you up there because I may have been shaking the camera while it was on the bench so um, yeah hopefully you should be able to see that from there anyway so let's continue on Okay, that should should do it. Right. Okay, let's give, just get around to you and I give you a look at that. So hopefully you can see that we have our primary bevel all the way out to our edge. I can feel a bar all the way across the back, so I know I'm out there. Um, just be careful not to cut yourself off that bar. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change over to the tail grid. Just do a small bit of work with the tails and grit, just to polish the edge slightly, and then we're going to camber the blade. Okay, so that's where this cambered roller comes in. Again, excuse the mess of the hands, but this is a messy process. So have uh, plenty of cloth nearby and have a tray just to catch all this gunk, all right? Right, so I'm just going to quick polish on this. Okay, 
way that you do it. Now what I want to do is I want to camber my blade slightly. So I just want to roll off the edges on both sides. Um, if I don't do that, what can happen is when you're planing, you can leave, the edges can dig in and you can leave track marks. All right, so we just want to roll off the edges ever so slightly. Um, just nick the finger there, so give that a bit of a clean up. Right, so because this is cambered, I can now lean to the slightly on the right and slightly on the left. So we start it off, and I'm going to go to the right for 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just work it back to the center. And then over to the left side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and walk it back to the center. Let me just check that. So that has just rolled my edges slightly. I'm just gonna give that one more pass. So again, just working it up onto the right side, and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and walk all the way back to the middle, and then camber over onto the left, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then back to the middle. Okay, so. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but I've just cambered the blade ever so slightly. So I've just rolled the corners down. Come on, we'll focus now. Just down on each side, okay? Okay, so nice and simple process. Again, with the cambered wheel, as you can see, you can rock left and right, and you can actually put the camber of the wheel into the blade if you want, if you want to make a scrub plane and you really want to curve that blade. But we just want to roll back the corners. Just that little bit, just to stop us leaving track marks in our work. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn our wheel from 12 o'clock, we pull it out and we rotate it to six o'clock and that will allow me now to put a secondary bevel. Now, it's not necessary to put a secondary bevel in if you don't want to, but it just makes resharpening easier. You're not sharpening the entire primary bevel, you're just sharpening that secondary bevel. So when you wanna sharpen again, just leave it set to six o'clock Give it a quick sharpen on a thousand grit onto your water stone, quick run of the strop, five minutes and it's sharp again. All right, so all the initial work is put in setting our edge and getting our blade square and all that. So that's what we're doing now, but it doesn't take this long normally to sharpen tools. All right, and the, the least amount of time you can spend sharpening your tools better because it's the more time you're working. Okay, so we're just going to give this a quick. Okay. So I just want to put in a primary or a secondary bevel now. I'll walk that all the way across. Just checking as I go. Okay. So we don't want to go too much. We just want to work it side to side. It doesn't matter if it's not if it's not perfectly or if it's not a perfect line between our primary and secondary, that's not important. What's important is that the edge is square, or cutting edge is square, which is what will happen using this guide, all right? So again, I just want to work that left to right. So like I say, it, it's not necessarily going to have a straight line between our two bevels because the blade itself might not be flat, but the the... the the blade edge is square, all right? That's the important thing. So we just want to feel for a bevel all across, or a micro bevel all across. So let's just see if I can, if we can capture that with the camera. So I have just a micro bevel or a burr. You can see that burr just all the way across the blade. So I know I'm out to the edge from edge to edge, okay? Hopefully this is making sense and it's a useful video for you. Right, just get the blood off the work. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, again, I'm just going to work my two edges then again. So I'm going to roll to the right. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And back center and over to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And back to the center again. Okay, now, let's have a quick look at that. Okay, so I'm going to show you the secondary bevel. And remember, it doesn't have to be square between our primary and secondary bevel. If you can see that there, it's not perfectly square, but the edge is square. That's what you have to be concerned with, all right? So we're just going to remove the bore now. So just nice and gently place our plane blade nice and flat and just nice and easily drag back. We don't want to damage our edge that we've just put on. Right, that's it. Okay, so now over to our water stone, which we have soaking. So again, we're going to use... The 8000 grit side of this now if you're going to use water stones you will need a diamond plate you will need a flat diamond plate to keep these things flat so i'm going to go back to my 400 grit with this up the thing with water stones is you remove you, you can remove a lot of material quickly from the stone all right so you can get a hollow in your stone and that's no good for sharpening your blade or you can get it a camber you can get it sloped and then that won't keep your plain blade square okay so we're just going to give this a quick work. I know this is pretty flat because I've been using it yesterday, but just to show you, I take it, keep it nice and flat to my diamond plate. I'm just going to work this back and forward. Okay, so we're good and flat. That's what we want. Check, just check that every single time we go to use this. All right, we just give it a quick run on our diamond plate just to ensure that this work surface is perfectly flat. Again, this is a messy process, so uh, make sure you have an area or somewhere to do this, not directly on top of your workbench, because it will get destroyed. Okay, now, I'm not gonna forward them back on this, I'm just gonna drag back, all right? So even pressure again. Keep walking it back nice and easy. nice and wet check my edge I have a nice bore all the way across there now so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work my camber again so I'm gonna go roll to the right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and back to the middle I'm counting the strokes now not the seconds so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten and then we're just back to the middle again for just for a couple more just be careful not to drive or slip off the edge we don't want to ruin our new work edge okay so let me see if i can get you a close-up of that i'm not sure if we can get it with this camera but there is a burr just formed all the way across the edge there hopefully you can see it okay Okay, so again, we just want to take that bore off, nice and flat to the back of our stone, and just drag it back nice and gently. Okay, and now we're going to finish on our leather strop. So just let me go get the strop, and then um, we'll polish this edge. Right, right. This is our leather strop. Again, very easy to make one of these. This is actually just a leather belt that I cut in half, put the two halves together, and as you can see, does the job perfectly well, okay? You just get yourself a thick piece of leather, fix it to a piece of timber, you have a strop. You can buy strops online, if you have the gear, make it yourself, it takes 10 minutes. Any kind of cutting compound you can use on this, you can even use just compound for cutting paint. All right, that does the job as well. So a small bit of that, we don't need much. And what we're going to do then is just work our plane blade back the way. All our strokes are going to be back the way. I'm getting blood everywhere, so forgive me. So all our strokes, just find that bevel, find the edge there, feel for it. And we're just going to just work the edges. This is right at the tip of our blade now, we're working. So this will just polish it up. This is just a finishing touch, just to get that razor sharp edge. 
have it nice and polished. Again, it's even pressure all across our blade and it's all black backstrokes. I tell you what, it's about 30 degrees in this shed today and it's like an oven. I'm starting to sweat bullets. Okay, so again, I'm just polishing the edge of our blade. that nearly there and I reckon that should be good enough so I've just polished the very edge of this let me see if I can show you this again I don't know if I'm It's so hot in this shed that the camera battery actually overheated. So uh, I'm not sure where we are, but we were just finishing polishing this. I think we got it, so we'll just give it a couple of more runs. Just to polish right out to the edge. Working it side to side. Okay, that should do. And then we just want to again work the back just to take any bore off it and we should be good to go okay so let me see if i can get you a close-up again of this try and get around to the camera here so if it'll focus there's just a polished edge right on that blade and we have a slight camber from corner to corner i'm not sure if you can see that um, but trust me it's there okay so let's get a piece of paper so look how sharp it is it's okay we have a, a razor sharp edge on this all right it'll slice and dice all day as they say in woodworking sharp is not sharp enough so you're going to have to get yourself a sharpening system i recommend that veritas honing guide it's nice and easy to use once you get to grips with it and it's so repeatable so i suppose the next thing we do let's stick this back in our plane and the proof, I suppose, is in the pudding. And uh, we'll try and take a few shavings if I don't pass out from the heat first. Okay. Okay, let's get our plane blade back in our plane, right? So let's get our chip breaker on first. So we don't want to drag it over the edge and destroy our newly worked um, edge. So we put it on from the side, slide it back, if you can see that, rotate it around, and then slide it up to the edge. Of our blade okay we want to stay about i suppose two to three mil back from the edge keep it nice and square tighten it down okay you want to drop it into our plane then so just hold up your plane try and keep this guy at 90 degrees and then um, just drop that in again try not to hit your edge because you don't want to ruin your good work uh, keep it nice and square drop on the cap iron snap it down and we're good to go so just bring that back in let's square it up before we do and we'll crack that back in okay now this is just a bit of southern yellow pine from the good old united states so we just take a few shavings as i say the proof is in the pudding as you can hear they are some very very fine shavings so we've got a right good edge on this Let's move that back out of the way for a sec so there are some beautiful nice shavings let's see if we can get a little bit more on that so again some nice full length shavings there as you can see Going through that like butter. Let's go a little bit more. See how we're looking. Keeping it square. Whoop. There you go. 
Beautiful Shaman. So, that's sharpening a plane blade. That's the Veritas Deluxe Mark II Honing Guide. Um, I've been John McGrath. This is man and shit. Or this is man baked to death and shit. And uh, yeah, so if you like this, hit like, hit subscribe. I will leave links in the description to where you can buy all this stuff. And um, I'm going to give away a few plane blades shortly on my channel. So pay attention for that. Um, I want to get some other you guys out there started in the shed. So I have a bunch of number fours which I can tune up. And I want to give out to some lucky subscribers. So um, hit like, hit subscribe. Leave comments below. All feedback is welcome. I'm going to go pass out in the corner now. So thanks for watching.